Hey there, YouTube! Welcome back to Artichoke Dip. My name is Rob, so tabletop gamer. And in this video, I'm going to talk about where the hell have you been, Artichoke? It's looking like we're going to get a couple of weeks off here. And, well, some new products I've recently received that uh, I'm looking to jump right into and get into. So before I start this video, if you liked the video, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, please click the subscribe button, followed by the bell icon. And every time this ugly mug uploads a brand new video, you will hear about it. So let's get into the meat and potatoes of everything. Let's get into probably the one question everybody was asking themselves. Artichoke, where the hell have you been? Well, I decided to take some time off uh, between the holidays and... Um, more or less, I was had a lot of things on my plate, so I needed some time. I had to give something up for a, a little while, and I decided, okay, I'm going to back off on the videos for a little bit and focus on some of the more issues I had at hand. And, well, it seemed like after those were over, one thing just kind of, how do we put this like a snowball effect of one catastrophe after another, after another, every weekend. Um, with the grand finale being waking up and going, huh, we don't have any hot water. Hmm. Only to find that the hot water tank heater had decided to uh, leak and destroy the subflooring. And that was a whole weekend spent ripping the hot water tank heater out, ripping subflooring out, redoing all that, putting it back together. And, um... Yeah, going from there to now, everything that's going on worldwide that we all hear about all too well at, you know, anyways, we're not going to get into that. We're not going to talk about that because that's not what this video is about, but you know what I'm talking about. So I had decided, well, this is it. This is a good time to jump back into things. So a few things I wanted to talk about that I have picked up and I have been meaning to turn it down for a second I've been meaning to uh, get into and make a video about and talk about but I just really haven't had the time and some other things that have been sent to me so I wanted to kind of bring you up to speed and I also want to talk about um, some notes that I wrote down and a I guess you could call it a GM emulator that I had designed um, and I was in, how do I put this, the beginning stages of it. And I thought it was a pretty good idea and it was something I wanted to share with all you guys. So, but, well, let's go over a review and let's talk about a few things that are out there right now. Now, granted, I know right now is not the time to be going out and buying stuff and everything is such a gridlock in the market right now, but it will pass and eventually life will get back to normal but in the meantime some gaming material that you guys should probably know about and let's face it as we stand depending on which part of the world you're watching this in um we might be you know confined to the house for a couple of weeks so what are you going to do at that time sounds like a good time for solo rpg to me so the first thing I want to talk about, um, I received this last week from Kevin Sambita over there at Palladium Books. And if you recall, I was talking about, um, he had put out what was called The Raw. And let me see if I can find that book, because I, I am actually still using that. And I have my game notes in it. Anyways, it was called The Garden of the Gods. And it was a raw edition, and it was a pretty, how do you put it, rough draft. And it was really good. It was really, really good. For those of you out there that love um, fantasy settings, medieval fantasy settings, in, and it's, I don't, I'm not even going to say it even has to be in the Palladium fantasy world. You could use this as a standalone in Dungeons and Dragons or Ruin Quest or whatever game system you're playing, you can integrate this into. Well, Kevin has actually now 
has this published and out to the market and ready for us gamers to pick up and to use and that is called the Garden of the Gods. There is a lot of cool, cool stuff in here and I urge you if um, whether you like Palladium, Palladium Fantasy or Rifts or you don't, it's it doesn't really matter. This setting that he has made is by far one of the best I've seen come out in a long, long time. I mean, it's Dungeons and Dragons has done a lot of remakes of the Temple of Elemental Evil. They're, it seems like they're remaking a lot of the stuff that they had a lot of great success on back, well, when D&D &D first came out and they're just kind of trying to rekindle the success from that and the thing I enjoy about Garden of the Gods is this is an entire fantasy campaign setting to itself and it's brand new which is good it's something fresh into the gaming it's just not a remake of something we remember from an older edition that has been taken and as they put it, revised and made better. And depending on your gaming taste, it could be better or, well, it could be worse. You just don't know until you, you get into it. But I have to say, Garden of the Gods, from what I have seen, and I have not played this book yet. Like I said, I've just recently received it. I'm still into the raw edition that he had sent me. And this is the actual published book. And I strongly urge anybody, if you're looking for a very unique setting where, and now when I say unique setting, what I'm talking about is we've all played the fantasy genre where you have the cookie cut out, um, here's the tavern, here's the dungeon, and you fill in the blanks from there. Whereas of this takes place around the gods and around those deities having power that not only can they bestow in gifts that they can give to your characters but quests that you must go on in order to basically collect the little tidbits of the story to put them together through artifacts and other quests that they may ask of your characters to carry out that can open up even more worlds to the palladium world as we know it of Palladium Fantasy. And now I'm putting this into a nutshell and I am slowly working my way through Raw. I haven't gotten through all of it yet. And when I say Raw, what I mean is Kevin released a rough draft of what was to be this and he sent it out to a few people. It was only like 2,000 copies worldwide that were distributed. And luckily he sent me one of them, which I am humbled by. I am really humbled and that is very cool and I'm um, I can't tell you how humble I feel about that that he actually did that to me. So I have to say guys if you're looking for a new campaign setting something you know that's a little bit different than maybe what you've been playing lately maybe you've been noticing hey I'm kind of you know how many different versions of Ravenloft can I play? How many different versions of Greyhawk, the world of Greyhawk, or so on. And I, mean, I can sit here and go on and on and on. And you know what I'm talking about, but you're looking for something, some material that's new and fresh and give you some cool ideas. Definitely, I would check this one out, Garden of the Gods. Very cool stuff. So, something else I had picked up. And, as you know, I play various different versions and editions of D&D &D and other game systems. I have so many game systems that I keep binders, loose leaf binders with notes in them, and as I get more or less worn out on one, now I'm not going to say worn out because I never really get worn out on gaming, but um, I want to do some different gaming. I will, I'll go back and pick up my loose leaf, go back into it, and play that game again 
one of the things that I'm always looking for is cool source material that will give me more time to play and take away from that downtime of sitting and drawing up the maps and how do I put the random tables and all that type of stuff that kind of slows you down and I like having pre-published stuff that I can grab to just go right to and boom and just keep the story going and just keep gaming so I was looking around this is months ago and actually I had received this uh, right before I made my last video and I saw it and I was like wow and I couldn't pass up the price it was I think I paid six bucks for it shipped to me now this is from third edition and it's out of print it's something you really can't get anymore it's for the d20 system but it is called enchanted locations crypts and tombs now the cool thing about this is this is just an open source book that you can go through that's going to give you different scenarios you can play through it's going to give you ideas on treasure it's going to give you a lot more for the solo RPG player uh, another resource to pull upon so you can focus more on the playing aspect and unless you like it some people one thing they really do like about tabletop RPGs is creating the worlds creating the maps drawing out the dungeons on graph paper and putting forth all that time and then going through and playing it so if you're one of those type of people, and there's nothing wrong with that, um, when I first got into RPG, I would have to say the majority, oh man, I used to spend hours with graph paper sitting down and just drawing out dungeons and making world maps and all kinds of stuff. But then as I put it, as I perfected learning how to play solo, and at that point, tweaking and figuring out how to use everything to do game sessions at that point I found well wait a minute they have these materials over here that are already at that point uh, pre-published and all they got to do is a good resource I can just pull upon it open it up integrate that right into my game and it's already done now a word of caution you can get too reliant on that and that's not what I am implying here. What I am trying to say is using things like this is excellent and will heighten your game experience, but detail it to your game sessions and your gaming world. As I've always said with pre-published anything, take what you like and don't use what you don't. That's the whole thing about solo RPG. It's about you gaming the way you want to game and enjoying that game the way you want to enjoy gaming it. I think I need a drink of coffee here. So this was a very cool book that I seen, I picked up, and I was like, man, I'm going to get this because not only does it give me dungeons, it gives me creatures, it gives me treasure, it gives me all of this stuff this is all stuff that I'm going to be able to use for basically any of my RPGs now if you watch my channel for some time you know that my favorite genre of RPG is medieval fantasy um, it's what I love I like a little bit of sci-fi and I do like um, horror such as like uh, Call of Cthulhu not as much as I do medieval fantasy though. Medieval fantasy is always going to be my favorite and it's always going to be the one I go to first. But let's face it, after a while you do want something a little bit more. So that's where for me something like this comes in handy, comes in great and I strongly urge you guys out there too with your solo RPG something I want to how should I put this convey to you just because you see something that's a cool source material for another game system don't 
be frightened away thinking you have to purchase this other game system in order to play it. As a matter of fact, I have found some of my best gaming sessions has been a hodgepodge of different source materials from different games put together and taking what I like out of it and putting it together and using whatever system it is that I want to use, mainly the D20 system. I like the D20 system, how that works with your six attributes and it just, it seems very fluid to me and it seems to work the best. But just because you're playing a game system, let's say like Forbidden Lands, that's a silhouetted D6 system, it doesn't mean that you cannot use something like this as source material integrate the ideas, the maps, the encounters, take those creatures out that may not exist in that game system and put something else as a substitution in its place to run it. So when I say using these type of material for your solo RPG and using it effectively, that's what I'm talking about. Go in there, see what you like, see yeah, this is going to be cool. You know, you, maybe you've been sitting down and you've been thinking about creating a new campaign setting. And as you're going through and you're thinking, oh, it would be cool to have this or this or this, and you come across something like this and you see it in there and you're like, hey, that's kind of what I was thinking. Use it. Take it. Use it. Take out what you don't want. Keep what you do want and put it into your game. So this is a very, very cool book and you may still be able to find it um, I'm looking to see who actually published this thing fast forward entertainment and looking at this I'm going to guess the copyright on this is probably right around 2003 right there look at that copyright 2003 fast forward entertainment so it may be a little hard to come across the find, but I'm sure you can still find copies out there. And if you do, they're probably relatively cheap. Oh, wait a minute. No, this isn't as old as I thought it was because back here in the back cover, it says fast forward entertainment 2018. So maybe perhaps they um, relaunch this, put it back out there again. I don't know. Heck, I don't know. Also, I know I got it for about six bucks. That's all I know. And I'm very happy with it. So, what else have I been doing? What else have I been getting into? Well, um, I came across another game system, and it's a D6 silhouette game system. It is templated. Now, what I mean by that is all your characters are, you have a template, and you just go in there, assign your points and your tributes. Character creation is simple. Playing the game is simple. The way this whole entire game system is set up is very simple, but the hours of storytelling, adventure, and overall vastness, we shall say, well, that's yet to be determined. That is this right here I had picked up, Star Wars. The role-playing game. Now this is a 30, 30th anniversary edition, the slipcover, and let's talk about what it is. This onto itself is its own role-playing game. So you get this booklet, and I sat down over a morning drinking my coffee and skimmed through this. If you've ever played any type of role-playing game from Four Against Darkness to basic D&D, &D, basic fantasy, Pathfinder, I mean, just, I'm naming off a few here. This game will be very familiar to you. You're going to be able to go through the rule set and you're going to be able to pick it up like that and you're going to see how simple it is. That's the very cool thing about this game that I like is that they have made character creation very simple. Um, the rules are brief and straight to the point. It's not like some other game manuals you see to where you pick it up and you seem like you're reading this essay that goes on forever about one rule in the game and there, you know, there's more to come. 
It doesn't do that in this game system. This game system is very brief, straight to the point, and very simple to be able to create characters and throw right on your table and go. The cool thing about it is you also get the source book, which is right here. The source book is going to go into now the creatures. Now when I say creatures from the first three original movies that George Lucas had released. So those would be A New Hope, Return of the Jedi, and Empire Strikes Back. So all the creatures seen in those movies, droids, and of course different races of beings are all represented in here. So if you're thinking more or less some of the newer stuff will say after those first three movies like Attack of the Clones at that point you could do it with this game system but it's going to require you at that point to make some of those templates to make it work but if you play solo RPG and you enjoy solo RPG I don't think it's going to be really all that hard to do Every, like I said everything this game system is such a very cool game system very simple to understand the thing I love about this is it's nice and neat when you go in there straight to the point you have all the information you need to help everything go quickly unlike some of the other games we see out there to where you have to go on a wild goose chase from the front of the book to the back of the book to the middle of the book to the front of the book to the back to find the information you're looking for. This, however, is not like that. Um, it is very, very cool. You go through it and everything you need to see is here. Now the other advantage to this is all you need are just basic six-sided dice to play. So you don't need a polyhedral dice set for this. Any six-sided dice will do. And for the solo enthusiast, this will be, if you enjoy Star Wars, you enjoy fantasy, you'll have hours of fun with this. And the other thing is too, if by chance, you know, this time that we're gonna have here coming up with this global pandemic, um, maybe some other people in your household, maybe that have never played a tabletop RPG, this one is an excellent one is a good starting point and it's something about Star Wars I can admit it's something everybody can relate to and it's something everybody has seen um, even I'm gonna say people who have never watched all the Star Wars movies you could say the phrase you know Luke I'm your father they automatically know what you're talking about maybe they can't tell you the exact movie it came from but they know that at that phrase you know what I'm talking about so this guy right here is an excellent game system um, I've had fun with it I uh, rolled up a couple of test characters went through played it and um, I have to admit it moves pretty quickly it's like I said very simple uh, if you've ever played a silhouetted system with d6 dice it's pretty straightforward as you would expect in a uh, d20 system, if you roll a 20, of course you're looking at a critical. If you roll a 1, you're looking at a miss. In the silhouetted d6 system, if you roll a 6, you take that number, you roll again. If you roll a 1, you missed. So, very cool. It gives you a lot of options, gives you a lot of freedom. And the simplicity of the game is what makes it very cool and very cinematic, believe it or not. Um, I've said this before in my other videos, one of the problems with games that become too complicated, whether you're playing in a group or the solo enthusiast, is it can slow everything down, it can feel very clunky. And this takes away from the enjoyment of gaming. Whereas if this game system is very simple, moves very quick, so it's very, very, easy to create those large cinematic events that we see in the films with the battles and if you were wondering before I go any further what about equipment 
machines such as at ats and imperial walkers and star destroyers and all that yes they are all in here in the source book and it tells you how to pilot them and everything you need to know about at that point whether which side you decide to be whether you're the rebel alliance or the imperial you uh at that point can figure it out from there so i think that's enough said about star wars when i'm moving on i could go on for quite a while it's a cool game system i love it um when i saw this fantasy flight games had re-released this because originally it came out with just the one hard cover but then they put the slip cover together and they had a sale i believe it was cyber monday it was a Cyber Monday sale when they came out with that. Um, I believe I got it for it was like twenty-seven dollars, and it normally retailed close to about fifty or sixty bucks. So I was like, yeah, "It's too good of an offer to pass up," and that's going to be one I'm going to add to my library. And I highly suggest for you sci-fi nuts out there or Star Wars fans alike, your gaming shelf probably wouldn't be complete without Star Wars. All right, so let's talk about another game system out there. Um, uh, believe it or not, so I know right now, I guess there's no good way to go about saying it, so let's just get it out of the way, this global pandemic that's going on right now. And when I seen on the news, they said, hey, it's moving this way. And, you know, looking at, what was going on in China and everything at that time, I said, all right, artichoke, what are you gonna do if you're stuck at the house for a couple of weeks? And I had decided, I've had my eye on this game for a while, but it seemed like every time I went on Amazon to look at it, they've always been sold out, out of stock. And they actually said they had 10 copies left. And I'm like, now's the time. Because if I have to be stuck in, which, by the way, just getting it out there, I've done my due diligence, and I have plenty of resource supplies of coffee to be able to weather this storm. But I decided it was time, at that point, to pick up Forbidden Lands and get into this. So I have been playing this. I have not yet played this game. I got it, and let's talk about a little bit of what is in here. So, unlike your traditional fantasy RPG, such as basic fantasy, D&D, &D, blah, 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 so on and so forth, to you create this heroic character that's going out on conquest to whether it's slay the murderer or defeat the evil dragon that's plaguing the land or what have you this is a little bit different um in this game setting humans are more or less really looked down upon and by the other races of this world and in here you're going to find a lot of the same character classes that you have come to know from other game systems as far as the races go one that's very cool and it's very reminiscent of Palladium Fantasy is they have the Wolfen in here, as well as you can also play a Goblin. Now, one of the things about this is you're not a hero. You're, well, you're a cutthroat in a, how should I put this, a cursed land. And you're trying to basically, well, Cut out a little piece of pie for yourself and create a stronghold of operations for yourself. So as you venture through the land, you're going to encounter very hideous other races and monsters alike with a lot of peril. I like that. I really like that. The books are wonderfully bound. They're really nice. I mean, high, high quality and this is actual real leather bound book here cool thing is they give you this little 
uh, cloth book marker as well, which I love. The artwork is spectacular in it. This is a D6 system, and it does use some other polyhedral, such as the D8 and the D10, but most of the game is D6, which is really cool. Getting back to what I was saying earlier, you could use this as a system, standalone system, and play it as itself, or you could use it as a backdrop for a campaign setting. Because the cool thing about the Game Master's Guide, right here, is that it gives you a whole lot of ideas and random tables you can use to be able to create your own campaign or play the ones that they have given you in here. Ha ha ha. The way that this game system is set up, which is really, really cool, just comes with this right here, which gives you even more randomized tables. We love them, random tables. A solo enthusiast, heck yeah. I mean, that's that's the bread and butter of solo RPG or your randomized tables. They give you a very, very cool map. Now, this, when I first saw it, I kind of, how do I put this? I was kind of like, uh, thinking this is just like Gloomhaven. And I'm gonna give you some of my thoughts on that here in a minute. Maybe, maybe not. We'll see where it goes. But you get this awesome map with this game. And on the map, if I can get it opened up without tearing it. Haha. -ha. Now, on the map, there are areas that are already marked, whether they are villages, whether they are dungeons and or castles or strongholds, that you can go there and, at that point, venture. It comes with these stickers to where you can, at that point, detail this map exactly to your gaming taste. Now the map is two-sided, so it's identical both sides, so you can, I guess, play it through as it was written by the publisher, and then the other side is up to you to create the world as you see fit, however you want to. Um, so for me, when I looked at it, I was like, that's cool, it's a cool little thing that they give you there, but it's probably something that I don't know, I'm not going to really use a whole lot. Um, particularly as far as Gloomhaven goes. Um, so for people looking to get into solo RPG, Gloomhaven really doesn't use dice. Um, it's a cool game, I will give you that. Whether you love it, hate it, or you're in between, it's a cool game. The only thing I just don't like about it is these stickers that you permanently put on the map in that the only choice you have is to purchase new stickers, or I see they now have these removable stickers you can put on their map, which raises the question in my mind, well, if you're going to sell removable stickers, then why in the heck didn't you just do that in the first place? save everybody the trouble, but they probably wouldn't make money on it, all the way down to taking the card out after it's been played, and they recommend you rip the card up and throw it in the garbage because you no longer need it. I'm not doing that. I'm sorry, as much money that I spent on that damn game system, you think I'm going to do that? No. Hell no. So, I was kind of set back when I saw that. I saw the map and I saw the stickers and I'm like, oh no. What are they going to expect me to tear pages out of the book and throw them away? Are you mad, man? So, unfortunately, well, fortunately, not unfortunately, fortunately, no. And everything I'm seeing from this game system is excellent. Now, this weekend, um, I decided... It was time to get back into gaming. It was time to 
brush the dust off the books and get back into things because it's been quite long enough. I think I've taken a long enough break. Um, and one of the reasons why, too, I can say, not only just because I've had things going on that have really needed my attention over the weekend and used up money and time and all of those things, but, um, two, I want to keep my channel fresh. I want to keep my channel new. I want to keep content new. Um, one of the pitfalls I think I see that happens on YouTube a lot is people start to run out of ideas and then they just start how do I put this the quality I guess you could say begins to fade over time because they're they're running out of ideas and things I would rather take a break and sit and collect my thoughts and evaluate and then make a new video with something fresh and cool to be able to present to you guys rather than just reiterating what I've already said over and over and over again to the point that it gets extremely boring and people, well, dislike it. So that's where I'm at. So if you guys wondered where, it's, where I've been, I haven't been hiding. I haven't been hiding underneath a rock or anything like that. Just decided to take some time off. All right. So, I got the game systems out of the way, and this weekend I decided I'm going to get back into my RPG. So, if you remember, I think it was... Wow, I'd have to go back through my videos and look, but I think it was either spring of last year... Was it spring or fall? I can't remember now. It might have been fall. Now that I think about it, um, I had done a video and I had talked about the essentials kit. And I had rolled up characters and I had been playing through them. And I have everything in here. And I decided, hey, I'm going to get back into this and picked it up, had all my notes and everything, and started playing through it again. Which is why I've always stressed, you know, hey, take good notes. Keep them in a folder, a loose leaf binder, um, a file folder, whatever, whatever works for you on a PDF on your computer or a file, whatever. Just keep that information because when you come back to it, you can go right back to it. And it saves you the time of creating characters over again. But... When I decided to take some time off, one of the things that I did, um, my daughter, she loves puzzles. And so I had seen these, and they're actually pretty cheap. It's called Clever Paper. They're made in Russia, and you can get them through Amazon, and it takes a while to actually get them. So it could take upwards to like two to maybe even three weeks before I see them, unless they have them in stock and they send them to you right away. But for 20 bucks, what you get is pretty cool. Now, the cool part was it gave me and my daughter something to do together because they are historically accurate from medieval times, but you actually have to sit down and the instructions, there's no words, they are in Russian, so if you can speak Russian, you'll be able to read it fluently, but if you're like me and you can't speak Russian, they're very well illustrated to where you can just look at it and know how to put everything together. And it's a 3D puzzle. Me and my daughter love doing this. We had a lot of fun with it. And I wanted to show you guys something else out there that makes excellent 3D terrain for your game table, won't break the bank, and can be used over and over. Now, one of the things that I am currently playing in this module was I am heading towards the Hunter's Lodge. Now, if you have the Essentials Kit and you've been through the book, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And one of the cool things that I saw with this clever paper was a Hunter's Lodge. So I picked it up, and I'm going to show you guys what I'm talking about here. Right here, 
Now, the cool thing is, it's a 3D puzzle. This is made out of very sturdy cardboard, and you can even take it apart, put it back in the box, and put it on your um, bookshelf if you wanted to, to take it out at a later date. Or like I do after it's made, just put it on display, because it is really cool. Now, besides... Uh, let me get this together. Besides, obviously, you can see the outer sides of it, it is functional as well. So, the model itself actually opens up to the inside. And, believe it or not, whether by chance, whether by they designed it this way with gamers like us in mind, it is scaled to 28 millimeter. So it's perfectly scaled. Um, of course, there's some areas that they're really not scaled to 28 millimeter. Even the little miniatures that come with it, because they're little cardboard standees, wouldn't fit in the areas because they do pack so much detail into these things that it's not going to be feasible. But for time, distance, movement, reference point, having a three-dimensional object on your game table to be able to look at. And for me, one of the things that I enjoy about tabletop um, RPG, and I've talked about this before, is I really love miniatures. I love building miniatures, painting miniatures, uh, creating the terrain, and I love incorporating that into my solo RPG. But one of the cool things is, is when I can take a map out of a published adventure, and actually replicate that and bring a 3D version of that to my game table. Um, it just heightens the game so much better. It makes the game come alive and at that point I can actually look at the map and I can see where all the cover is at that point for archers, where the ambush points could be. All of those things at that point really make the game session so much better than looking at a two-dimensional feature of it so I really really do love these now I bought quite a um, I think I have one two three I think I might have I think I have four of these now I would have to look because we started building these over the winter and we were having fun with them they'd show up and We'd sit down and we'd take our time and we would build these things and have a lot of fun building them. But they also double out for great three-dimensional pieces on your table. And that's something we can all, you know... Well, if you got small children at home and they enjoy making puzzles, you enjoy your solo tabletop RPG and you're looking for something that you can do with them, and you can enjoy to do together, and in the end, you're going to have something you're going to be able to use for your tabletop. I suggest checking this out. It's well worth 20 bucks. Um, I'm just going to put that out there. Now, their other models are more pricier. Um, one of them my daughter looked at, and she said, man, that would be cool to build, was Notre Dame. And I think the overall dimensions was like four and a half foot tall by four foot square and that was almost like 120 bucks but like I explained to my daughter I said yeah that's cool it's impressive I said but where do we put it when we're done because I said we don't you know you're gonna need four four square feet in the house somewhere to display this thing all the time and I said I think your mother might get a little aggravated over that so Anyways, we never did get that one. If one of you guys get the Notre Dame one and set it up, you know, hey, give me a shout out so I can see how it works out on your game table. All right, moving on, and let's get to the next thing. So, as I said towards the beginning of the video, one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about that... was a simulator basically I came up with that I have been using recently in my solo RPG that I find works very well particularly with combat um, one of the things hmm, 
Hmm. Where did I put my booklet? Just had it. One of the things, oh, was already here in the stack. Duh. So, I don't mean to sound like a broken record. One of the things, one of the things, one of the things, one of the things. But one of the things about uh, we find ourselves with combat, um, particularly when you play solo, and it happens. You've you know, spent all this time coming up with an idea for a backstory for your character. You created your character. You get a lot of work in this character. Maybe you've leveled it up a few levels, and you're now invested into this character. And the thought of it dying and starting over, well, it's kind of disheartening, to say the least. And so to a certain extent, I'm sure a lot of people out there do we favor our characters a little bit more over the encounters to where at that point the encounters suffer? So I came up with an idea here and it's a combat matrix that I've been using. And how I did this was I took a 10 sided die and I took a 6 sided die. And now there's much more to this that I'm not going to get into because it's detailed towards this right here, the Temple of Elemental Evil that I'm playing a first edition adventure in right now. So I don't think going into the other parts of it is going to really be relevant given the fact that it's detailed towards this game system. So it really has nothing to do with solo RPG as far as covering everything out there, just taking it, bringing it to your game table, is this will, right here. So the first thing I, I went into is I listed 10 things on my combat matrix. And I'm going to tell you what I use, and it might help you. So the first one was the monsters advance as a group. So instead of one or two monsters maybe advancing into the room, they're all going to come in at once like an ambush. If I roll a two, monsters advance two small groups attacking from opposite positions. Okay, number three, monsters do a ranged volley attack if they have archers. Number four, they just charge straight in. They're going to do a charge attack. Number five, monsters advance as a group silently. Now, this is interesting because they're advancing as a group silently. And now it's going to be up to you to be able to roll for your characters against how silently they are moving and as to whether they are detected or not. Number six, monsters use height as advantage, roofs, ropes, etc. Seven. Monsters use a magical scroll or device, and I like this one. I really do like using this with my encounters. Not only does it make your story and the combat and all that more interesting, but two, after the battle's over, you get to collect them goodies and sometimes use them and incorporate them into your characters. Number eight, monsters use poisoned weapons in melee. It kind of puts a spin on things, kind of at that point changes because even though you may have defeated, now you're poisoned. Now you're going to have to pull together resources and you're going to have to figure out how to cure the poison of maybe one or all of your characters in the group and how to do that, which to a certain extent is, well, it's going to help particularly those people who enjoy theater of the mind, um, role play a lot more than rather than just looking at a battle grid, having your minis out there and making a decision, my characters move here and this is how the encounters respond. So instead of using what maybe the DM's guide refers 
how they would do it or however you're doing it. And I'm not saying however you're doing it may be the perfect way for you. I'm just giving you some ideas here that you could use at your game table to me, at that point, give you time to focus on your characters that you're running and basically allow an AI to run the encounters, making the solo gaming, well, have more of a solo feel towards about you enjoying your game and not having to worry so much about how the encounters are going to react to your characters and keeping it more suspenseful. Anyway, so I was on number eight. Number nine, monsters use poisoned weapons ranged. Okay, you just went through that. That's uh, number ten. Monsters intend to subdue subdue to sell characters as slaves so this is a very interesting one um and where i came up with this one and it goes back to the one of the first times i ever played DD in a group and um i had a half elf rogue and we were captured and all our weapons were taken and we were locked up and we were sold at that point into a slave camp in a I remember, it was a mine it was a mine is what it was and um, so we had to figure out using the tools how to be able to escape our shackles be able to make very crude weapons to escape the compound and get out and then Anyways, as the adventure went, we, of course, had to start over. Like, we started out with at least some basic weapons and armor to where we went from that to nothing to, yeah, basically escape slaves, having to uh, do minuscule jobs of better surviving to get back to where we originally started. So it was rather interesting. That is a very interesting twist to put into your games. It can sometimes make things very interesting though, to say the least. Okay, so one through 10, and I'm gonna go through these very quickly because I talked through a lot of this. One was monsters advance as a group. Two, monsters advance to small groups attacking from opposite sides. Three, ranged volley attack. Four, charge into battle. Five, they advance as a group silently. Six, they use height as an advantage roofs, ropes, balconies, etc. 7. They use a magical scroll or device. 8. They use poisoned weapons for melee. They use 9. They use poisoned weapons for ranged. And 10. They, uh, at that point, intend to subdue you, to sell you into slave camps. Okay, so now we have how the encounters maneuver around the board towards your characters. Let's go, I use a d6 for this, and who they're going to attack. So number one, they move towards the character with the lowest hit points. That one's always, I. that's rough. And when, I, when that comes up, that it really does make you... You gotta make some quick decisions and you gotta be, you know, yeah, it, it stinks. Number two, they move towards a character with the highest initiative. Number three, they move towards a character with the highest strength. Number four, they move towards a character with the highest dexterity score. Number five, they move towards the closest character to the group of monsters. Or six, they move towards characters with the most gold. So I made these, and it works very well. And I really encourage you to give this a shot. Um, sit down and break down a matrix like this, using a ten-sided die and a six-sided die, and changing things up in your imagination how you would like to see those monsters advance or how they're going to attack basically using the strong and or weak points of your character and you'll be amazed at how 
this is really going to change things. Now, where I had gotten the idea for this was playing for against darkness. For against darkness gives you some ideas, and they have their own table chart that you roll that will dictate how the monsters at that point are going to react to you, which is cool. And I took that and I elaborated on it a little bit more, and then I refined it and I came up with this, and this is what I use, and I've been having a lot of success with it. And I hope you do too. So, I think that's where I'm going to leave this video off. And looking forward to many more in the future. Because I'm more than certain we're all going to get through this. This is just going to be, well, a mark in history in which we're all going to share a part in. But... In the long run, we're all going to come out on the other side. So, with that being said, game on, my friends. And this is Artichoke Dip, signing off. I'll see you guys later.